Good morning, everybody. I'm heading out to the Diamond Gym Monster Camp event slash food drive. So I'm going to take some cool videos, some pictures for you guys, and uh, stay tuned. Well, everybody, we made it to Diamond Gym, my old stomping grounds. So we're about to get ready for this monster event, so get ready. Now, like I said, we're going to do some pictures, a video, and everything else inside. So let's go. Got some old stomping grounds, Diamond Gym here in Maple, New Jersey. Just to show you, this is one of the rooms we got going here. Just walk through. No one's in here now, but we're going to walk and continue. Do a quick, give you a little quick little tour of what's going on. Music blaring. That's the way you got to like it, your hardcore gym. The infamous leg room that shoot every pro has done here. Top NPC guys done legs. I know it ain't that big, but guess what? Who cares? You gotta get the work done. There's some more. See people going to work nice and early in the morning before the event. Gym have these big boy weights, 200s, 210s. So, a couple tips that I, that I have for you is one, make sure you warm up. And uh, one of the things that I like to do as a warm up is pretend I'm laying down on the bench, right, right now, and I have um, like three pound dumbbells in my hand, and what I do is I just go in a circle, I come around, and right about here, I turn my hands back over, and I come back around, okay? And after about two sets of 10 to 12, I'm in this position, laying down still, and gravity is pulling my hands back, and I go up and down. That's it. That's how I warm up my shoulders. The first exercise that I do, and I wish I was doing this 30 years ago, I consider a warm-up. Even though I'm training, I don't go, I'm going to use this term, but you guys, you okay with this? A balls out, I don't go balls out on this exercise. Whatever I pick is more for feel. Do I feel comfortable that day doing a hammer shoulder press? Conventional, laying on my back, or do I feel better laying on my chest? Do I feel okay doing a barbell press today? I don't do a, show, a barbell press all too much, unless I do like, um, I don't know the correct term is, but I drag it or I press it against the power rack, because I can't balance the bar, <clears throat> I can't go heavy. But I have found that, and I wish I had done this earlier, using shorter bars. You see, a longer bar, you put too much tension on the shoulder, shoulder girdle in a bad way, I think, the word. Young and strong, we can handle it. I think that we're damaging our shoulders and we don't even realize it. So if I can recommend one thing as, as far as a shoulder press with a free weight, is take, you, you all have, I don't know, get, a, get a regular short bar and load it up and press it with the weight is closer. Like this, pressing it. That's what we're going to have here. Um, dumbbell presses, Smith machine, other other ways of doing a shoulder press. What, what I like to do is sometimes do six sets on shoulders, shoulder presses, where I'm actually doing three different types of shoulder presses. I could do two sets of uh, a machine press, like a Smith, two sets of Smith, 
two sets of dumbbell presses, and I'm getting six sets of shoulder presses instead of just picking one exercise. Sometimes I change it up where I'm doing a two second stagnant hold at the top and a five second descent. Try that, that's a bitch. One, two, and five seconds down. You're not getting many reps that way, but you're blowing your shoulders up in a good way. I like to do about anywhere from nine to 15 sets for shoulders, depending upon the day. Um, I usually start my shoulder training um, the day after I train chest. I don't ever do shoulders the day before chest. Mm -hmm. Always, yeah, always. Like you start out with your side. Always. Just because they say the magazines or the top pros talk about you know, shoulder presses first, I have no problems going to the gym starting with rear delts. No problem starting with bent over laterals on the bench or just leaning over conventional way. Um, I think one mistake we all made, and I made it early on in my career, is where I use my hands to move the weight where it should be using your elbows. Think of you doing a bent over lateral, whether it's you're seated or bent over. Think of you pretend you're a puppet and there's a string on your elbow. You want to start with the dumbbell going out and then your elbows go up. So it's two parts, which I'm going to make it look like one part. One motion. By doing so, you get your rear delt. Two ways of doing it. You can have your hands facing each other, your palms facing each other, or this way. It doesn't matter. Whatever you feel, then do that. I, I'm never one of saying it must be done a certain way. I've changed my training a thousand times for 35 years. I can't tell you how many times, uh, you know. I've done, I've done something where I didn't do it the same way the next time. Another trick that I do sometimes is they, they say that shoulder presses affect the front delt. They say the bent over dumbbell lateral affects the rear delt. Okay. You ever go into the gym and just do 12 to 15 sets of one exercise? And just one. To see where it actually affects you. Because let's say... You're gonna do for me. You need to figure out how to train hard, and that doesn't mean harder to send more sets, more reps. You gotta make each repetition harder. So, do you have a five-second negative with a squeeze at the top? Do you do a five-second positive and a five-second negative? Do you do one and a half? Five? Do I just load as much weight as I can under control and do uh, a set of six, strip it off, and it off, and it off, and it off However, it comes in, each step has to become harder, each set has to become harder. Because without uh, discomfort and pain, change does not happen. That's true. So, you guys didn't do back yet, right? Sixteen sets for arms. That you have different heads. So even if you're doing, let's say, four exercises, and maybe twenty reps, four exercises, or whatever, you're trying to do those exercises that's targeting different heads. Yeah, you're hitting different parts. Exactly. Exactly. Not hitting the same part over and over. Like some people, they would do biceps and they would have an easy curl bar and just curl for like maybe like five, six sets. But you're still hitting the same, same part. There's no point. My question is going to be like, if you say six different biceps, like six different sizes, what would you give the difference for a large guy down with the chest? Would you get 20, 20, 20, or you still still have the same range? As far as the rep range? As far as the rep and the size. Like, if you're saying like 16 sets. Okay, it also depends on how dominant the body part is. So if you have a strong chest, 
you wouldn't have to kill it as much. But if you have a weak chest, I would say you at least like two and a half minutes. So you're saying to bring up any bipart arms, whatever, and you get that like an overused bipart, like the arms, and you got to just Yeah, no problem. Especially with, with, with something like bicep that you have that you use all the time. They will respond to higher volume, higher reference. Versus something like uh, your back or your shoulders or something like that, body part that you don't really use that. You know? What a great day for an event. Even though it's raining over here, but inside, the energy, got to see some old friends, got to connect with some people, learned a lot, as usual, but I also got to give some food away to a great, worthy cause. So everybody, on to our next adventure, video, whatever we do, and I'm out.